What's going on everybody? How you doing? In today's video, this is a donation request. This is for Rob. This is Yes. The song is Tempest Fugit. Fugit? Fugit? Something like that. Tempest Fugit. <laughs> Whatever it is. Okay, so Rob says, this track is when Yes started moving in the accessible prog direction, to borrow my phrase that I used. But it's not that simple. The band members also changed in a big way, although the singer sounds like john anderson it's not john anderson it's trevor horn but that's not the only personnel changes at this point i think i should just direct you to the wikipedia page for yes and the sections about drama and 90125 of course 90125 was totally pop rock with only tiny prog touches and was a smash success but john is back on the album and trevor horn is now the producer please check the wiki page so this request will please no one <laughs> <laughs> it's not prog compared to everything that came before, but not pop like the Smash 90125 that came after. Plus all the changes of band members in this time, plus how Trevor Horn sounds so much like John on the drama album. Okay, I've gone on long enough, so I'm curious for your, for your reaction to this track in light of everything that happened before and after this happened. Now, here's the thing. I don't, I'm not like a big yes guy. I don't know a ton of, a ton of yes. I had, I grew up, I had fragile and that's it and what i've listened to that you guys have seen that's on the channel which is like a handful and a bunch of it was on fragile one of the songs i didn't i like didn't even recognize the i was like i think i've heard this before and then i looked at the fragile old track list it's like oh yeah it's on fragile that's how long ago how much i don't i i'm not familiar with it right if it's not roundabout right <laughs> I forget what it was. I, I want to say it was uh, Heart of the Sunrise or something like that. A really great track. It was awesome. But uh, I forgot it was the last track on Fragile. Didn't didn't even... I remember listening to that record when I was in high school. And I basically listened to like the first couple tracks. And that was like it. Like I had listened to the whole record before. But mostly it was for Roundabout. You know? Like I mostly just listened to Roundabout on the album. I don't really know. Yes. Pretty much at all. Sorry. <laughs> didn't get it didn't get into them i just didn't i got into dream theater you know they were current i was listening to albums that they were putting out at the time all that so that's like the prog that i got basically wasn't into rush even though i know the dream theater was crazy about you know i i just couldn't get around getty's voice at the time and i never really properly listened to them you know, I never really properly listened, like gave them a chance or any of that kind of thing. I just didn't. My dad didn't listen to Rush. So anyways, yes. Uh, same thing with, yes. My dad wasn't listening to Yes. I don't even remember how I got Fragile, like how I got that album. I think, I don't know, maybe it was from like Bass Player Magazine, Chris Squire, yeah, and I just picked it up or something. I, I, I don't even remember. Don't even remember. Anyways, so what happened before and after this album, I don't know. <laughs> so there's that so uh there's one more thing the album before drama was called tornado many yes fans consider this the hold your fire of yes and you guessed it i love Tor tornado yeah rob loves hold your fire and uh that era of of rush so my own specific request for this video after the reaction i'm not gonna ask after i'm gonna ask now because i want people to <laughs> i'm gonna ask now uh, please ask the fans their opinion of Tormato, and if they happen to be a Rush fan as well, their opinion of Hold Your Fire. So, people out there, what do you guys think of, if you're Yes fans, what do you think of Tormato? And if you're Rush fans, what do you think of Hold Your Fire? What did I call Hold Your Fire? I called it Dumpster Fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh shit okay all right cool so we're gonna check this out i i don't know anything about this song what else uh drama it's it's off of yes's 1980 album called drama their 10th studio album trevor horn on lead vocals jeff downs on keyboards followed the departure of john anderson and rick wakeman oh oh boy after attempts to record a new album in paris and london had failed drama was recorded hurriedly with horn and downs as a Tour had already been booked before the change in personnel. Oh, man. Album marked a development in Yes's musical direction, combining the band's progressive signature with Horn and Down's new wave sensibilities. 
drama was released to a mostly positive critical reception with most welcoming the band's new sound peaked at number two in the uk number 18 us though it became their first album since 1971 not to reach gold okay tempest fugit was another song sketched out by the squire howe and white trio in late 1979 its title is a latin expression that translates as time flies according to how its name was derived from squire's habit of arriving late to places oh god i hate that <laughs> i'm a, a very early person he attributed its ascending and descending guitar lines rapidly changing keys to the influence of pioneering jazz guitarist charlie christian whose work with benny goldman in the late 1930s helped establish the electric guitar as a lead instrument very cool okay so wait a minute this is pop even though they're am i understanding this correctly this isn't pop yet this is like in between is what you were saying the next album is pop i don't know the next album i know owner of a lonely heart i've only heard that like on the radio i you know just the chorus so <laughs> i don't know i i don't know that album like at all so this is what we're checking out if you're new here please subscribe check out my videos all kinds of videos reaction videos bass videos music videos check it out if you like the channel, you want to support the channel, you can hit super thanks underneath this video. You can hit me direct in the description. I got PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Amazon wishlist, mailing address, and I do donation requests just like this one. So if there's something you want me to watch, listen to, talk about, hit me direct, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo in the notes section. Leave a link, leave a description, let me know what you want the video to be on, and I'll make the video. Thank you guys. Okay. Yes. Tempest Fugit. Let's do this. Bam. <laughs> on the base. This is like a... That's 
whole pattern. That's like some jazz shit right there. I remember doing patterns like that for uh, like Berkeley finals. that a lot that's pretty cool it's not exactly what i was expect i guess i was expecting something more more poppy than that but not like you know i don't know i don't know some kind of something in the middle but i feel like now nah, that was like full-fledged prog right there <laughs> it was pretty cool yeah i like that a lot of just like the rhythm you know it was really just like aggressive and 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 uh churning and and uh, tons of forward motion yeah all those patterns so like yeah for for like different finals at Berkeley you know like different levels or whatever of your playing your instrument you have to do different things one of those things is like arpeggios and as you go to the next level or whatever your final on arpeggios gets more difficult you have to do different things with arpeggios whether it's like okay at first you're just playing what i, what, I don't even remember <laughs> i don't even fully remember but you know you have to play you know whatever arpeggios that they're asking of you like all just all up and down the neck whatever it is you know whatever key you're in or whatever and then they would have you you know a different one would be in okay now you need to do it in all the keys but first inversion starting on first inversion you know starting on the third up the whole entire neck then starting at the fifth, up the whole entire neck. Then starting at the seventh, up the whole entire neck. And then uh, uh, leading tones, you know, like up, uh, you know, so kind of like, kind of like this. So this is like, what it sounds like to me is they're playing a tone ahead of the one, a tone behind the one, and then the one. A tone ahead of the three, a tone behind the three, and then the three you know all that kind of thing a, a tone ahead of the five a tone behind the five and then the five right so you're doing kind of like uh yeah just like uh i don't remember what it's called because i mean uh, you know there, it's just names to what it is i know what it is but i forget what the name is i'm saying leaning tones but it's like it's kind of like leading tones and passing tones and it's just the notes around the chord tone before you hit the chord tone, right? It, those kinds of things kind of help you with soloing, you know, and jazz. This is like jazz kind of theory, basically. Anyways, that's what it reminds me of. I probably explained that terribly. Maybe somebody will get it. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> if you get that, what is it? What is it that the jazz theory book? It's like this big, this big book. All the, all the theory that you need for jazz is all in there. Like literally, it's all in there. You don't need any other book. The Jazz Theory book, it's all in there. I haven't looked at that thing in forever, but I, I definitely have it. This was really cool. I really liked it. Yeah, I really like this. This is very cool. I hear that uh, Trevor Horn does kind of sound like John Anderson. Kind of does. 
kind of does. The uh, tone quality is slightly different. Is it tone quality? Yeah, there's something, I mean, I mean, aside from the voice being a different voice, there's something about, I mean, maybe a vocalist, a real vocalist would be able to say like, oh yeah, John Anderson sounds more like this, like he's got more of this, where Trevor Horn has more of this or, or less of this or whatever. I'm a bass player, so. <laughs> Chris Squire sounds great, you know, like, I think he's using a flange. It kind of sounds like a chorus a little bit, but I think it's a flanger. Very cool. Yeah, great bass playing. Great bass playing. Okay, so what's going on with this uh, Tormato? Yes, fans. What's your opinion of Tormato? And Rush fans. What's your opinion of Hold Your Fire? Yeah, I would definitely say that this is prog. I would totally say this is prog. You're saying this is moving in the accessible prog direction. I mean, maybe that's accurate. But to me, I'm like, yeah, this is like, yeah, this is prog. I mean, even this, just in the description of what it's saying, this song is Tempest Fugit was another song sketched out by the Squire Howland White Trio in late 79. Uh, no, 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 let's get to the, it, he attributes ascending and descending guitar lines, rapidly changing keys, you know, all that kind of thing. I'm like, that sounds like prog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very cool. I, I like that song. That was that was a uh, definitely very cool. I'm sure I would be into way more. Yes, they sound, you know, like they have cool stuff. Yeah, and Roundabout and Heart of the Sunrise are freaking awesome, awesome songs. Super awesome, like really, 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 really fantastic songs. So this was cool. I liked it. Awesome. All right, thank you guys. I'll catch you in the next video.